Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Old World where I'm teaching you how to play the game. So where we had left off we had just cleared another uh, tribal encampment over here and we were about to start making our way. I, I could maybe go and take out Crete but what I might do, well the thing is there is an advantage to having as many cities as possible but you can also grow a city to just take over a city site and then just have a bigger city like that's possible i could just have one really big city here but maybe i won't we have managed to grab ourselves a garrison in this city so it would be good to attach a governor and i like to pick governors who are relatively young with okay skills so like sabium here would be a relatively good guy he add a little bit of gold and I think he's a reasonable pick. I don't think he has any other jobs right now, does he? No, I don't, it doesn't seem like he has a job right now. So I'll put Sabium in charge of the city. This will cost me 100 civics and two orders. But it will uh, pay some dividends over the course of the game. Now we could go ahead and start reducing our discontent here if we built some walls and a military unit to guard this city. That is something that we do eventually want to get around to and the thing is there is silver down here but the problem is i don't think you can build anything on tundra i would like both of these silvers to be owned by thermosis i don't know if i'll be able to get down there so for ankua it might be a good idea to pick up the forum and the treasury now get these basic infrastructures up build up our civics build up our gold or do i want to go ahead and get more workers i don't think i have the orders for more workers yet so i think extra gold and civics would be really really useful I'd also really like to build an Odeon, but I don't think I can afford to do that yet. So instead, I'll put down another plus 11 stone quarry, and that'll be super useful for continuing to increase my stone income. Stone is critical. It's one of the most important resources in the game. Of course, every resource is important, but stone is particularly important because it is the resource that you use to urbanize your civilization to build urban improvements. My aunt has died and my wife is no longer ill. That is good. She's still relatively young, so she will be around for a while providing us her resources. Now, let's have a look. I don't think I see any really important cards here. I could get a free chariot, which would be quite handy to have a free chariot. I could get a free court. I could get a free light chariot, which I think is my unique unit, right? As Hattusa? No, heavy chariots. Yeah, so I think I'm going to go ahead and research... Things, because I have such a high science rate, I think I'm going to get the lumber mill because it would be good to be able to get passive wood income. And more importantly, getting things like free chariots and free scholars, those are going to be handy. Now, Atalia the Younger, my general, is actually retiring, so I could choose a new general for this unit. Uh, and I think I will put a new hero on here, Su, Su Miri, the hero. She'll give a 15% attack boost, a 3% defense boost, and she can heal in neutral territory. That'll be dead handy for this. We did manage to build a fisherman in this city, and it would be a good idea to build another fisherman to continue to use these citizens and develop this city. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep developing my, my economy very slowly, very, very, very methodically, very certainly. I'm making sure, I, I think I'm under building military units a little bit right now. So that's something I do need to be be careful about, essentially, is, is what I'm going to say there. I did manage to get myself a rancher. How many orders do I have? I have 11 orders in the bank and one worker who's idle. I did get a free worker. Now, if I'm thinking about which direction I want to expand the city of Hattusa, I can't really expand it to the left, so I'm going to have to expand it to the up and to the right. I think that's going to be our best bet, is to expand towards the Pontiac Mountains. Which means that the place that I build the hamlet is important. And I also need to build a road to the hamlet as well. And I think this city, this spot right here, is a good spot for the hamlet. And, and the reason that that's a good spot for a hamlet is you can only build urban improvements adjacent to the city centre or two other urban improvements, right? Uh, the hamlet counts as an urban improvement. So even, let's say I ran out of room over here for urban improvements but i plopped down a couple of hamlets next to each other over here i'd then be able to use those hamlets as like expansion locations that i could build even more urban improvements they would just be like kind of suburban rather than like attached to the city center so they have to be adjacent to other urban so the hamlet is good because i could build it here it'll expand my borders and then tiles adjacent to the hamlet it'll be much easier to actually start laying down infrastructure hamlets also get a bonus to uh odeons and baths now i believe baths 
They require fresh water. Yeah, they require fresh water. So baths will have to be built next to rivers. So if I'm going to be building baths in the late game, they'll be going around here. Um, yeah, but let's go ahead and get started on this hamlet. It's going to take quite a few orders, three orders to get that hamlet started. But this will also start converting this really, really strong food income that I have into gold. And like I said, gold is a fungible resource. You can turn gold into many, many, many different things. So getting a strong gold income, in my opinion, is very important. Plus it'll expand my borders. Like there's a whole bunch of reasons that I want to do this. One area that I might consider expanding in the near future is down south here. There's some good land down here. If I were to put down like a hamlet here and a hamlet here, I could maybe start to build off a little bit of an urban area. In order to do that, I would need a specialist in both this mine and both this quarry to expand the borders out a little bit. Um, but I'm much more likely to get these rancher specialists first. So we'll kind of, we'll play it by ear and we'll see how she goes. Speaking of specialists, let's go ahead and get the farmer in here. Let's keep this city growing rapidly. Rapid growth means rapid expansion of the economy. I'll be able to make more specialists and specialist workers are quite helpful. Let's get our hero moving up to Thrace. But more importantly, let's get our boat moving to Const uh, the Con kind of Constantinople area. Ah, there is actually a relic here, a, um, what's the word, uh, ancient ruins over there. I want to move you tentatively, but I would also like to heal you. So we're kind of making our way up towards here slowly but surely. I'm in a little bit of an orders crunch. It's kind of hard to uh, sustain everything I need to, but this, this orders problem will get much better now, especially as I start leveling up. You can see here I built 12 improvements, which gave me enough score to get my Cognomen upgraded. And your Cognomen will reflect like how you got this score increase. I built a lot of improvements, which means I am uh, known as Mercili the Mason. My heir has been sneaking off into the wild after class each day. So uh, I can make her ruthless, which will increase her training, but lower her discipline. What is her current stats? Her current stats is one wisdom and four charisma. So anything that would increase her charisma would kind of fit her role as a diplomat. So romantic would be very, very useful because once she's leader, it will increase her chance to have children and also increase her relationship with other people, especially because um, charisma, you can see here, if you are, let's see, where is it? Oh, it's only if you're the ambassador, you get foreign opinion. So never mind. Uh, but basically, loyal could be quite good too. You have to remember, a lot of these things open up opportunities as well in events. I don't think I need Ruthless on her. Let's go for Romantic. Let's go hard on the civics end of things. And I have leveled up from being the governor of this city. You do passively earn experience when you're the governor of a city. And the amount of experience you earn from being the governor of a city goes up as the culture level of the city goes up. Um, I believe he's making six XP per turn. So as governor, I will get 50% city defense or new units will gain experience or I could just level up my courage, increasing my military training. I remember military training also translates into orders. So this would make my infantry units start with quite a bit of extra experience. Well, that's quite good. I feel like strict is pretty good here if I do intend to expand my military and I'm not against the idea of expanding my military. So perhaps I will take strict here. Well, yeah, I'll take strict here, okay? Because it is about time. Like, I've spent a lot of time building infrastructure. I might need a unit or two soon. Oh, right. I don't have enough iron production to make warriors. So, taking a look at our capital, we've got a big problem here. We've got six citizens sitting around doing nothing. And while they do give me orders, they are uh, also eating into my gold income. So I kind of need to use them to do things because we have improvements in population and... Maybe it would be a good idea here if I build this rancher. This will give me half an order per year. That seems quite good. We'll spend maybe like, we'll build two specialists maybe. Let's have a look here. I think it might also be a good idea to get a minor specialist here. This would give me extra gold. Or perhaps I could go for even more growth. Well, you know what? It might be good to get a stone cutter. It's tough to say. It's tough to say. Yeah, let's get a stone cutter. That's, that's, a, that's a reasonable choice in my opinion. Now, five of my workers are sitting idle this turn, which is fine. I think my main goal now is to get my military units moving towards here. So I'm going to anchor this ship so I have a way across. Although actually, let me undo that. That's not a good space to anchor. I'll maybe wait a turn before I do that anchoring. Um, let's start getting these military units in place. I'm going to move them all like one or two tiles. Let's kind of get them all moving in the right direction. So I've moved a little bit of my military to the north. You also have a, a promotion available. This will cost an order. Besieger is quite good. Being able to attack into urban effectively is nice. I'm sitting on a little bit of orders. I think I would like to move my settler now towards the city. So let's find the most efficient route there. I am going to want to build roads between my cities because I'll spend a lot of upfront orders, but it'll save me a lot of orders in the long run, moving my units around my empire. 
Um, so roads are definitely something I'm going to want to get a hang of, uh, especially using the trader builders who can very rapidly build roads rather than having to build one road per turn. They can like build as many roads as you have orders, essentially. I think they can build up to three or four roads per turn. So Thracian outpost near Sinope has sent a raid and my daughter has been tutored, improving her charisma. So she now has a seven charisma character. That's super powerful. And she's now come of age. So it might be a good idea to look to get her married because she's 18 now. Uh, so I can give her some experience. Getting experience on her would be really good. She'll level, get closer to a level or I could just get some wisdom. Um, honestly, free wisdom isn't bad. I'll take the wisdom. So uh, my king wants to write a biography of his life. I can gain six orders and some legitimacy or I can gain some culture and some orders. I think I like the idea of the, um, the orders and the legitimacy. Legitimacy is quite a good stat to get. It's very, very powerful. And the commander of this unit is too old. But the only guy I have available is Dudalia of Tarsa. He is a tactician. Hmm. He'd lower the unit's attack and he'd lower the unit's defense, but he would give it a crit chance and make it immune to crit and give it a bonus attack against melee units. I think this is an okay choice. Actually, let me undo that. I would have liked to have moved that unit first. I want to make my way over here. So this is the most efficient route. And then I will add Dudalia of Tarsa. So let's get the settler moved over here. This is the most efficient route. So I'm prioritizing military units. Now, Sinope is going to be under attack. So I think I'm going to redirect this slinger to the city. That's important enough for me to like prioritize it. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't have a warrior and I won't have a warrior in time to defend that city. So I'll have to rely on a slinger and maybe, yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to defend the city with just a slinger. I may have to prioritize getting quick building a warrior here. And maybe even rushing it out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll rush out the warrior to defend here. I've neglected my military enough. I've got 14 orders. So let's make our way over here. Uh-huh. There's another. Oh, it was actually this barb camp that did it. Well, now I regret this choice. Well, you know what? The beauty is you can always undo in this game. The undo button is so beautiful. It lets you navigate your turn so ele elegantly that I honestly, I'm going to find it hard to play a game without an undo button these, after this. There's the enemy units. Unfortunately, you don't have a hero in command of you. And there's no generals available. I could promote you. Shield bearer gives you defense against ranged units. He extra healing. Uh, what are your current promotions? You've got amphibious. These are mostly ranged units. So I think shield bearer. Like if we look at how much damage these guys do, it's 2.5 health. If I take shield bearer, they still do 2.5. Okay. Uh, wait, this is an elite marauder. I don't know. Maybe it'll help. Maybe it'll help. So we got our treasury in here. I'm going to go ahead. Do I want to grab the form? This place absolutely needs a worker. So we'll prioritize building a work worker in there. Tarsa has completed its farmer. And it also has its garrison now. So I could put a governor in charge of this city. And there are a few available. Let's have a look here. Who would be good for the city? I mean, uh, Princess Nicam Nical Malti, who is my heir. If I put her in charge of the city, she would slowly accumulate experience she get four experience per turn and she'd make the city stronger uh, 10 civics like an extra 10 civics in the city is huge because it means i can build walls faster it means i can build the treasury faster um the big thing would be to get the culture open here oh god somebody's power washing jesus bro my neighbor has been power washing his garden for two days straight okay does he understand that i'm i'm trying to run a business here from my house he probably doesn't um, okay, so I think it would be good to get an Odeon in this city. Yes, I'm going to get the Odeon because I want the culture to increase in the city. The higher the culture level, the uh, more impactful her the experience from her being governor here will be. Especially because when my leader dies, I will be playing as her. Um, I would like to arrange a marriage to her. Who do I want to get married to, though? I could arrange a foreign marriage. With Egypt, perhaps, I could tie my dynasty to Egypt. Let's have a look. How is our relationship? I mean, Egypt is a good target, I feel like. We're already pretty good friends. I could also theoretically marry one of my noble houses. This would maybe patch things up with the riders. And the relationship with the riders is pretty bad, although it will change soon. I think a foreign marriage might be more useful here. So I'm going to go ahead and send, send Egypt a request to marry my daughter. And this should tie our dynasties together. And then I can focus maybe a war with Assyria later. Instead of having to fight both Egypt and Assyria, I can fight Assyria with the assistance of Egypt. Because Egypt is in a very safe nestled location. The city of Tarsa has built a farmer. 
I could go Wall Slinger here to reduce the discontent. I could go Second Builder. I don't have the orders for Second Builder. I could do a Festival, which would increase the growth and lower the discontent and also add culture. I could do a Council. I think it's okay for me to do a Festival here. Like I could do two festivals back to back. I just get an extra plus two culture in this city. That seems like pretty reasonable to me. I've got two orders left. And I have a slinger who I can move forward, but I cannot attack with. Now, the counter attack from that guy is a little bit too much for me right now. But I am out of his range as it stands. So I'll hold off on this slinger and instead I will promote this slinger. Heckler, brave, extra damage against melee units. That's quite useful. Nice little chunk of damage there. And unfortunately, this turn, a lot of my workers are going to stand idle. That is just the way the cookie crumbles. We did manage to get a garrison over here, which I'm pretty happy about. That's another half order per turn. So my orders are slowly, like we're very, very slowly. We're getting that number up. Oh, another general is retiring. Well, I can't do anything about that one. There is like a good triangle of farms in here because pastures add plus 20%. Uh, is it 40% for adjacent farms? Like if I go up here and I hover over these farm, is there a way to get at the show? Oh, that's not the button I was looking for. Yeah, here it is. So you can see 10 food in here. It's pretty good. I could also build granaries. Those are good for converting wood into food, into growth. I think I'm just going to sit on that order. It's inefficient to not use an order, but I don't think I have a use for it. Egypt is now at war with the Danes. That's fine. Here's the marriage proposal we were looking for. So we could marry into, uh, let's see, Prince Menkaur of Petra. He's from the Amarna family in Egypt. He's a commander. He has courage and discipline. And he will join our nation and it'll give us two orders. Or we can marry the oligarch Djoser, the scholar. So do we want her to be a... Uh, cultivator of arms of growth. I think it would be good to marry a commander. Having a military commander in our civilization would be handy. And this will give us 40 opinion with Egypt and any of the children of my dynasty now will be half Egyptian, which will also change uh, things slightly for me. We did get a developing event. So the culture in this city has upgraded. Ooh, this is big. We could found a religion. So normally I think you have to have two acolytes to have a chance to get this. But because the city developed, we could get Zoroastrianism. Now we could also get legitimacy if we wanted to go the God King route. I think I'm gonna found Zoroastrianism here. Having a religion is handy. Although, here's the question. Do I wanna go for Judaism? Adding a religion will make things complicated, but there are advantages to religions. Like they do, in, as long as you manage the relationship with the religion, like your cities tend to do a little bit more, they tend to broadly just do better. I am kind of tempted to go the pagan route though, where we go for polytheism and divine rule, and we adopt a pagan state religion. It's so rare that I go for the pagan play, actually. I'm going to go ahead and banish this religion. I don't want to, I don't want religion this game. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go for a pagan, a pagan game. I think that's a little bit more fun. Alrighty, let's get this warrior up in the face of this marauder. Let's bring the slinger behind him so we can attack and almost kill him. Now, which of these guys had the river attack? You have river attack. You do not. But that's fine. Begin dealing with him. Now, you might take a little bit of damage here from across the river. So I've used up quite a few military orders. This settler is making their way. Unfortunately, again, my builders are falling down the priority list because I just I don't have enough orders to make sure everyone's doing something. My economy's in an okay place. I need more iron. That's definitely for sure. In this city, I'm going to have to expand my iron production by making a miner. I think building a village here would be good because it would expand to this uh, resource here. This is uh, marble and marble is quite valuable because it will give you extra civics. So I think I'm going to start a hamlet here. It would be nice to get an Odeon to continue to develop the culture here. Like it'll take 500 years for this to reach its culture. And an Odeon would be good. Although Odeons are expensive. And this city is, already has a developing culture. So I don't think I need to do that just yet. Whereas a city like Sinop, maybe it would be better to spend my orders and my stone building a Odeon in here. Yeah, like if I put a Hamlet here and an Odeon, I think I'm going to put an Odeon right there. Okay, this will give me plus three culture in the city. It'll cost two stone per turn, but that's, that's you know, that's, a, that's the price you pay for quality. Um, and now I finally, I have actually a spare order to use on a scout. So here's the very, very top of the map. I'm wondering if there's a city around here. I'm now known as Mercili the Able, so my Cognomen has upgraded, which is giving me more legitimacy, and you can see all the things that I have achieved down here that are adding to that. I do need to kill six more military units, and Judaism has developed du dualism, and my son, who's second in line, is now old enough to be tutored. Well, I think I would like to prioritize the tutoring of my son, um, because he will be useful. He's not important as the 
the main heir, but he's still worth tutoring. So let's tutor him once with Alawama. He gets one he gets one tutor, that's all you get as a second son. Ooh, yes. Free heavy chariot. Now this would give us a strong showing in this phase of the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that free unit. I'm using my scholar's ability to get a bunch of free stuff from the tech tree. Absolutely, in my opinion, how you should play a scholar in the early game. Unfortunately, you don't have a hero in command of you. Um, the settler is almost there. I'm not gonna force march it though. All right, we're looking good. I've got 10 orders left and most of my military units are in the positions that I want them to be. Oh, I'm hard building a warrior here. I guess hard building a warrior is fine. More military units, more better. This one can defend the city, I guess. Let's start. Well, I don't wanna move this slinger to the front line because I'm not sure if I need that slinger there. I'm trying to think, this city's gonna definitely need to build like a village area over here in order to expand its borders properly. I think a triangle of mines here totally makes sense. I'm a little bit light on iron. So getting that iron production up is totally what I wanna do. I've only got positive three iron right now. So we'll go ahead and get to work on that. Need to sell some food so that I can buy wood and make a mine. Perfect. Now there is a war demand that has come in here from Assyria. They want me to declare war on Babylon. Now I could upset Assyria and gain experience or I could declare war on Babylon. Now Babylon is very, very far away from me, but also I don't see a point in going to war with him. I'm just going to go ahead and refuse, take the XP. They can be super mad. Ashurbanipal is super old, he should die soon. Um, Duke Moatali is ready to be tutored so I can teach him in philosophy, charisma, courage, or discipline. This is a second son, so he's less important. Um, so I'll, I could send him to go exploring and he'll come back with random events every now and again. And you know what? 10 year old boy, go explore the world. Absolutely a logical choice for a parent to make. <laughs> um, let's get our Byream in position to anchor for the crossing next turn. Now, our, now, next turn, our units will be able to cross the strait and we can begin the assault on Byzantium. Our Byream will take probably an excess of damage here, which is unfortunate because these are most, like a couple of these are ranged units. Ooh, there is a Barbarian coming from the east of Sinope. So I, it was a good idea that I kept that Slinger over there. There's another ambition completed. We've controlled six urban improvements, giving us another 10 legitimacy. That's an order per turn, just to put that in perspective. Babylonia contacts with you an interesting proposal. Uh, willing to part with some of your luxuries, they'll happily round out your court with either a talented minister uh, or trader. So I can send pearls to Babylon as a luxury, um, which is, a, I, I think that's a thing that you can do. You can send pearls to different players and they, uh, to different other people. Like you could do so much with luxuries. And I would get a courtier, either a court merchant or a court minister, or I could just get the XP and level up faster. I think I kind of want the XP. How old am I? I'm 46, so I'll probably live for another 10 to 20 turns, which means I have a good chance of getting that second level up. A free courtier doesn't really sit... It's not that important to me. Like, I have three courtiers right now. They are getting a little old. Maybe a new courtier is important. I don't care about my relationship with Babylon, though. That's the thing, because they're so far away that it doesn't really matter. I, you could maybe make an argument that I should make friends with Babylon so that I can get three people to declare war in Assyria. Perhaps that might actually now that I've said that that might be the plan for my next leader's life is to arrange a war with Assyria. It seems like a reasonable thing to uh, to plan here. Let's see. So what what kind of court people do I have right now? I have a court merchant, a court scholar and a court minister. So my court merchant is getting old. Let's grab ourselves another court merchant and my cognomen upgraded again. That's nice. Uh, welcome Dush Duchess Consort Ishtar Gamelot. So she's eh, not too strong, but she will give me all of these stats here. That's quite good. I could theoretically uh, use her to tutor, and I think I can also influence her. And perhaps she can even get married to some of my characters. I'm not really sure. Now, this city here, I think this is going to be a writer's city. They are currently the most unhappy because um, they only have a single city as it currently stands. So if I brought them up to two cities, they'd be a little bit happier. Yeah, let's do it. Right, we'll found a Kusara and Rider city here. It's perfect, so we have access to roads. There's also a whole bunch of like resources in and around here. Now, Ephesus as a city could use a worker. Again, I'm very, very light on orders. So as much as I want, I think I just have to go for the worker. And then I'll go Treasury Forum and see where we stand. And you can see here the hamlet has expanded the borders of my city. Um, however, we are missing a critical thing here. If I think it's B. Yeah, you can see this tile is yellow, which means it isn't connected to my trade network. So... In order to connect it to my trade network, I need to build an urban improvement here or a road. I'm going to build a Odeon here to continue developing the culture here. And after five turns, this will now be connected to my trade network and it'll actually produce 
uh, an extra 10 gold, which is great. But it also means, more importantly, my borders have expanded and I can start building my city out towards the Pontic Mountains. Uh, but yeah, don't, don't be afraid to ask questions in the... Oh, scouts can go into people's borders, actually. Interesting. I did not know that. I actually didn't mean to move this scout so much because um, I haven't actually moved my military this turn. So I think the big thing would be to cross and to take on this guy early. Get him out of the picture. We can kill him next turn. Actually, if I had positioned slightly better, because this guy can get over here. Oh, you just about can't make it. You can make it to there, though. And you can make it to here. And now we can triple attack and almost kill him. Can I get the slinger over? Yeah, the slinger over. Okay, got the slinger over. We got the kill. This will crack out another unit in two turns. That's okay. I'm okay with that. I definitely need someone to go pop this. Um, and it's time to spend some of my training to promote this guy with marksman, giving him plus one range so that he can kill barbarians from further away, a more safe distance. My warrior is almost done. Sinop has finished another fisher. I think it might be good to go for the rancher. We're going very specialist in growth and food heavy in this city, which I think is okay because that just gives us the sustain for our economy. And food can always be sold. There's a lot of good things you can do here. Do I actually want to build that hamlet? Or the Odeon, rather? I mean, it's 3.6 culture per turn. This city will take 27 years to get to the next culture level. This will be a 30% faster, so it'll shave quite a bit off. I think that's an okay thing to do. By the way, I absolutely adore the music in this game. It's so, so good. We're taking pretty hefty damage here. Persia has begun building the Ishtar Gate. There's another tribal raid coming. And Christianity has been founded in Damascus. Um, so I could support a foreign faith. I think supporting foreign faiths is good. Just the kind of... Well... It's an Assyrian religion, so maybe I don't care and I'd rather take the... Yeah, I'll take the legitimacy. Screw Christianity. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So we completed another ambition, so we can choose another ambition, so we can enact elites. This is a law that is unlocked at Jurisprudence. Jurisprudence is a pretty deep tech, as far as I can tell. If I come here to the tech tree and scroll to the right, I think it is, yeah. So I'd have to unlock this law. And like you consider, that's like thousands of science to get here. There's no way that I'm going to be able to enact that. Let's see, enact volunteers. That might be a little bit simpler. This is available at Manor. That's a 600 science tech, so it might be a little bit more. Or control six moats. Moats are unlocked at Portcullis. This is even cheaper. Honestly, I don't think I can perform any of these in a reasonable amount of time, like before this guy dies. And you don't want to fail an ambition because I think you lose legitimacy if you fail an ambition. So again, I'm just going to take the XP. I think the XP is honestly the best thing to do in this situation. Move forward, take the heal. You're going to be a reinforcement for this battle. You're very, very hurt. So the best thing for you might be to step back and grab this. I could gain a free worker or gain a free scout. I'm going to take the scout because there is this over here that I wanted to pop and I could also run along the sea. But first, let's manage the military matters. Um, number one priority is to get this unit killed. So let's position all three of our units here. You attack. Then you attack. And then you attack. So that's another unit killed. Ah, now the problem is he's going to take a serious amount of damage. Can I get his defense up with a unit maybe? Ah, here we go. Plus 20% defense. If defense and attack. If he's on a tile with an with the same unit. Oh, attack cooldown. Uh, well, I might lose a warrior. It sucks if I do, but I think it might be necessary. So we have a culture building in here going nicely. I could choose to train a poet now. This is my, my very first urban specialist. If I come over here to the apprentice poet, you can see here it gives you another three culture per turn. And because it's an urban specialist, it's two science rather than one science per turn. They also can be upgraded into a master poet who basically upgrades these abilities, right? You get extra culture. Citizens provide you with civics even more science, and then they can also become an elder poet, which gives you even more civics and stuff like that. So I think getting at least a level two poet might be pretty okay in here. This will be a very strong growth city, so there might be citizens sitting around, and so getting value out of those citizens could be quite good. I'm trying to think what else could we build in here. This is like a forward city, and we are next to the Danes and also a barb camp. Maybe walls in here with a defensive unit also fits. I think that does fit, actually. I'm going to go for walls and a defensive unit to protect the city. Maybe a slinger or a warrior or something. But I definitely feel like the city's feeling a little bit vulnerable. Now, I do have... I have a glut of orders. I have 12 orders. And stone is always a problem. You need so much stone to sustain the expansion of your urban empire. With this glut of orders, I'll bring my units back to 
the healing range of my cities. Let's bring this scout over here to pop this ancient ruin. Uh, let's see. So I can capture an Egyptian. Is it a, a noble? Capture the young noble and seize the trove. Uh, an imperious young man ahead of their own expedition. These witches, along with these lands, fall into the domain of Egypt. Desist and trespass shall be grac graciously overlooked. So I can offer a apologies and offer friendship. This will make me a diplomat. I don't want to be a diplomat. I want to be a diplomat next time. I can ask for reveal the entire territory of Egypt. So I can reveal the entire territory of Egypt or I can pick up 500 gold. I'd say reveal the entire territory of Egypt is quite handy. Oh, this was not very useful. In all honesty, I thought they would have a bigger empire. They're actually pretty small, believe it or not. But it was the more interesting event choice. Let's keep exploring here with our little little scout. I'm not expecting to see... Oh, I was not expecting to see another city on the border here. But let's go ahead and step out of range of, that, uh, out of this. We don't want to get attacked by these guys. So there is another... There's a, there's a few camps here for us to really clear out um, over time. Oh shoot, I used all my orders and forgot that I had a... I think it's important to stand in the forest. I'll buy an order and then attack him. My warrior is finishing soon. So we'll have an easy time defending here. Two skirmishers coming at the city should be defensible. Yeah, this... Oh! Aha! The unit spawned, but it did not act. So that's quite good for me. A scientist has leveled up. Or he tutored my son. A couple of people have died. These are old people who used to be in charge of units. And the queen of Egypt is dead. And there's a new 15-year-old queen of Egypt. And she does not like me. She does not like me very much, but I will get new XP. That's quite good. Ah, new ambition. So I need to kill two more things to reach this ambas ambition up here. Controlling two elder officers. These are um, barracks specialists. This is fairly easy and achievable. Maybe not before this guy dies, but it's relatively achievable. Controlling 30 population. That's actually extremely achievable extremely achievable for me uh controlling eight luxury i think the most one this one the control 30 population one is actually the most achievable because i already have like a really 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 good uh number i already have a really good population amount so let's go ahead and heal you up you will step back to heal as well you're very very hurt and you cannot afford to get any more hurt we want to prevent this guy from being able to step out of the city so you're gonna run home to heal Step forward and attack. Step forward and attack. We will take pretty hefty damage here. Now the good news is this guy's damage is not diminished by range. So he should be able to snipe his way through here. And I'll move this military unit up and promote it. Focus is good for critting. Critting crit is very, 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 very powerful. Uh, let's take crit here because it has a 10% chance to double your damage, which in the right situations can make or break a fight. Let's start a hamlet. Perfect in here like we wanted to and that's my entire turn like every turn is typically oh there's a quarry here i kind of want to build that i can't afford to buy any more orders so that's unfortunate so i'll just have to give like the city a task you do have a builder but i'm very very light i'll need to build things i need to build my garrisons like that's where the stone needs to come in um go ahead and get me a forum i guess it's a relatively cheap building i'm, I'm feeling like my economy is getting stronger very very slowly we're around turn 40, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Persia's building another wonder. Uh, my mother has died, and another character has died. So people are dying off. Okay, Alabama, so I get more experience. So as people die off around you, you tend to get experience. So you level up, and it kind of compensates for you losing those characters. Now, do you have Herbalist? You don't have Herbalist, so I can't justify that. You're going to take a pretty hefty chunk next turn from this. But we do need to slowly work away at the city. Reinforcements will be coming but possibly not as fast as they need to. Slinger's doing work. If you step forward, you could kill this guy. Get him. So we're defusing the situation. And you really don't want your cities getting damaged, by the way. It's really, really important to defend your cities because if they get damaged, they uh, their yields actually get diminished. Which is like, I don't know. I don't think I need to explain how that that's like really, really bad. But yeah, I'm getting my economy up. I'm going to want to start thinking about lumber mills. Like a couple of lumber mills here might be okay. Just because I have no passive wood income and that's a bit of a problem. I think what I'm going to do instead is position this builder for future action. So I'll move him over to this mine because I want to build another mine here, put a minor specialist on it and expand the city out into this, this like little valley area here would be pretty good. Absolutely want to build a garrison first is like the first thing I want to build in almost every city uh, in terms of urban improvements because that half an order per turn just it's a game changer. I need to sell some resources. Thankfully, I have a huge surplus of food. It's really been carrying me here. 
Um, I'll sell 200 food and then I'll get to work on... Oh, do I want a slinger to defend the city? Yes, I'll get a slinger to defend the city. Ooh, another ancient ruin over here. Amazing. You want to find those ancient ruins. They're like super high value. Okay, the head of the Ryder family has died. It's not a big deal. I could get a free court scholar and, you know, more science. Why not? It'll help carry me through. Now I need to retreat with you. You're a little bit too hurt. You're, you're ready to go join the front line. Now, the one thing I have to worry about here is the damage from both of these units is exceptionally high. So it might be worth it here to do a temporary... Well, actually, here's the thing. If you were to heal, would you survive an attack? You wouldn't. But you don't have to do a full retreat. How much damage would this slinger take? A lot. My units have been healed up in my territory, so they're kind of ready to maybe go back at this. This is why it's good to have an overwhelming force to actually take these. Otherwise, it's kind of spooky. I'm going to just pop you back here and heal you up. You should survive. You, on the other hand, unfortunately, unless I have a general... No, I do not. You're going to have to make it home and give yourself a little healing. This is why the free chariot, by the way, this is going to be a game changer. Look at the damage it does. It's pretty damn good. Um, let's get that moving to the front line ASAP. This is my unique unit, the Heavy Chariot. Chariots are really, really cool. I'll talk to you about what their abilities are here in a moment, but... Ooh, I cannot wait to actually use it and show it off for you guys. We got the miner that we wanted in here. Uh, let's get that 0 0.5 orders per turn from the rancher. Huge. I'm going to buy an order and then begin the construction of a mine here. I'll need to sell a little bit more food to build a mine here. And I want to build a mine here because when I put a specialist on it, it'll expand the borders out into this area. And I can maybe put down a couple of hamlets and expand the city center. Because the city center is, it's a little cramped. My poor builder building my fishing boat is getting, <laughs> getting slapped. Uh, I'm now known as the good, so my cognomen has upgraded again. Asher Bonabal has died and now his daughter is in charge and she doesn't quite hate me quite as much unfortunately my wife is ill again and another king died therefore i get more xp i'm happy with that so i can have one of my guys become jealous about me or i can be interceded i can i will intercede i want people to have positive opinions of me yeah, unfortunately i'm not going to get i think this is antioch i'm not going to get control of it we could build a theater and the big advantage of theaters is that it does lower the um the unrest in the city it lowers the discontent which is handy and it's even more culture and i think focusing on culture in our capital could be a good thing i think i'm going to focus on doing military matters over here because this is the part that has the most significance for me um, i'm going to go ahead and force march my chariot over here Ooh, i think i might be, yeah i think what i'm going to do so this is, this is going to be a very, very kind of complicated maneuver, but it's going to show off the combat mechanics of the game. So pay attention. This slinger is going to step back a tile. This warrior is going to take this tile. I'm going to force march, holding down control when I move, right? Um, that's this ability here, force march. Hold control to confirm. It'll cost me 100 training, but I'll force march this tile. Now I can't kill this guy, but if I soften him up just enough... The Chariot has the Route ability. Now, the Route ability is incredibly important. Let me see if I can find it here. At Route. So after the Chariot kills someone, it can attack again. It's one of the most powerful abilities in the entire game. Uh, we also got our ambition to kill 10 military units, by the way. That was pretty good. So now it has the Route ability, and I can attack again. Boom. Look at that. So this... That this is why cavalry units are so powerful. They have the ability to do multiple attacks a turn if you set them right. Set them up right. Uh, so let's see. We had a couple of events here. The veteran Solar. We could get military drill for free. We have a really good... We have really good tech right now. And my leader won't die very quickly. So a free tech, while nice, maybe I would prefer a, a court soldier. That could be like a little bit more interesting. I'm now known as Mercy Lee the Strong. We have leveled up again. Well, not leveled up, but our, our cognomen has leveled up. We've become more legitimate. Look how much legitimacy we have, by the way. It's huge. This is feeding us so many orders. And we get Boudicca. Boudicca the hero. Hey, that's nice. So she's relatively strong. She's just a good leader for units. So that's great. We have a strong general that we can attach to a unit. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm going to attach Boudicca to one of my warriors. I, actually, I should attach her to the chariot. <laughs> uh, be far better. All right, let's take a little time to heal up these units. And I'm going to need another settler now. So, I'll come over to my capital. This is the best place for me to build settlers because it builds it the fastest. Like, five turns for a settler in my capital compared to uh, nine turns in this city or even eight turns in one of these other cities. I do need to deal with this over here. Let's step the warrior back to the city to take a heal action and then we'll slowly chip away at this guy's health. 
So a lot of military matters. I used up a lot of my orders. Soon though, my, my economy will explode in terms of orders availability. Now we could go ahead and build the necropolis. We'd have to save stone for so many turns. It's really good. I think I'm more interested in developing amphitheaters and theaters to get a really, really strong culture in my capital so I can get to legendary culture and get all those culture events and stuff. Ooh, so we got exotic influence. I can lose legitimacy. I can gain legitimacy by refusing tribal customs. I can lose legitimacy and become exotic. Exotic is a powerful trait. It could be pretty good to pick that up. He'll live for another 15 years, so it could be okay. I think I will become exotic. I've, been, I've made a lot of legitimacy in this lifetime. So a little bit of stats here makes my leader more attractive as a leader. Like he's just, he's just a good leader. Oh, you pillaging mother pillager. He pillaged my land. He pillaged me. I'm not okay with this. Assyria converted to Judaism. That's interesting because they were the founders of Christianity. My wife is no longer sick and we got a new court scientist. Hey, I'll take a free court scientist. So we could pick up groves. We have a few groves. Groves are really good for getting access to luxuries. And we do have a... Mm. You know what? We do have a scholar in charge, which would mean we could get groves relatively quick. It's usually quite an expensive technology. On the other hand, we could get archives and start actually building up our tech. I think I'm going to go for, I think I'm going to go for metaphysics here. I can build my archives, start increasing my, um, start increasing my tech properly. You can only rely on a scholar for so long. And I have leveled up and I will take another level of wisdom. Thank you. That's another seven science per turn. Absolutely. The science is paying huge dividends for my economy right now. Ooh, okay. We have another attack incoming. That's okay. We should be able to deal with it. Unfortunately, I can't hurry walls in here. So we'll just slow build them. Nice one. You built your forum. Excellent. You've got your garrison coming up as well. I don't think I need walls. I think I do need more workers. Workers, 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 workers. Wart, wart, wart. So let's step forward with the slinger and attack here. I can't get the kill this turn, so I'm just going to add a general to this unit. I'm going to have Boudicca command this chariot. And next turn, I should be able to get that kill pretty easily. You know what? I might just build two more quarries here. Well, maybe not. Maybe I should build the lumber mills or even just urban improvements there. Honestly, maybe urban improvements are the way to go. Yeah, I have to be very careful about what I build where. Let's do an Odeon, more culture, more betterer. As much as I would like to build an Odeon, garrison first whenever possible. Stone is becoming exceptionally expensive. I don't know if I can keep up the selling and buying part of this for much longer. I need a lot more stone income. I could upgrade this guy to be a militia to help fight this off. I will. Let's do it. We've got a militia now. A militia can fight. Not amazingly, but they can fight. Convert a, convert a worker to a real unit. Well, uh, to a military unit, not a real unit. It's still a civilian, but it, it's a civilian unit that can fight. Just to give you a sense of the scale of the map, by the way, like, here's Turkey. Here's like the edge of Greece and like a little bit of, you know, stuff like that. Here's like the entire Black Sea. Uh, here is this is all playable area by the way because it's the dark clouds where you can't play this is arabia down here you've got egypt the literal like river runs all the way down here like just look how huge this playable area is this whole area up here to the northeast this is all playable there's playable space here it's crazy Alrighty, chariot go ahead and get that kill for me now, how long until I get that settler? You know what? This might be a case of where I rush a settler out. Let me see if I need to pass any laws first. So I got past slavery, which would give me four orders per year, but increase the discontent in all my cities. This is quite good to pass early. I think I'm going to go for freedom here. So I get that culture and science rather than slavery. Slavery can be useful if you rush it in this game, but I don't think I need to do that here. Um, but let's go ahead and hurry the settler. This does make future rushing more expensive and it also increases the discontent in the city and you can use any of these four five resources to rush things uh but right now i only have the ability to do with civics so civics is kind of like a global resource it becomes very very useful but you have to spend it very carefully and the reason i want the settler is so that i can force march it to byzantium settle the city and then heal all these guys without having to run them back to my main uh, my main encampment and then I can hit this next city and I'll do something similar essentially each time. Yep, yep, yep. I'm, I'm having to sell an awful lot of food to sustain my worker stuff. So it might be good for me to do a bit of wood chopping. We'll see what we can do here. Um, let's hit with the slinger. We'll take the warrior over. 
get that kill. Stand in the urban with the militia, because I believe, yeah, militia get 25% defense from being in urban tiles. And uh, we'll begin fighting off these guys. You know what might be a good thing to do with my time here? Is to just spend a couple of turns cutting down some trees. Because, like, buying these trees are so expensive, it's a really efficient way to convert orders into gold. Is to chop those trees. We'll build the miner here, because again, I want to expand my borders. And I'm just going to spend a little bit of time cutting down some trees. Because it's just, I'm just, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. My military units were eh, kind of neglected this turn, but that's okay. That's okay. My son is now a tactician. Excellent. And the culture in the city has developed, so I can get plus 60 culture, or I could get a public mural, which would give me culture and minus discontent. That is actually quite good. I'll sell off my iron for that. Did that not work? I held down control. There we go. So, uh... Public mural, boom. Our settler is completed. And I, like I said, I'm going to force march it here. This is a very expensive move in terms of orders. But by founding this city in favor of the landowners, I believe, because there are two crops here. It could be a trader city. There's no bullion here. There's ore. Yeah, I think I'll do a landowner. Landowner city, which will change my relationship with the city, uh, with, with my family, but that's okay. Um, so that, that cost me like... Like 80% of my orders for this turn, but it means I don't have to march my units back to my own territory to get them all uh, healing up. So that's like fantastic. So it cost me a lot of orders, but it was also very orders efficient, if that makes sense. Jeez. And that has taken up pretty much my entire turn, is just healing these units and moving in there. Um, now, speaking of Hattusa, what else do we need to do in here? It might be good to get a poet. Or expand down here if we plan to build an urban center. Yeah, let's make the miner. The extra 20 gold expands the city borders down here a little. I like that they changed workers. I believe workers used to get a lot more expensive over time, and it seems like workers have stayed now fairly constant in price. Um, I think that's actually a positive change for the game. Ooh. I'm now known as Mercilli the Noble, so we've leveled up yet again. We're at plus 70 legitimacy from my cognomen. And we did discover metaphysics, so science is now on the table. And I think I did say I was going to go for the God King route. So let's go ahead and get our shrines up now and start building a religion. Now, you're taking an awful lot of damage, but I think I can do some interesting stuff here. You can step back onto the main city tile and take a heal. I do need a builder over there, actually. Let's get you moving. You'll make another worker in time. So I think that's a good place to leave it, though. We're, we're like in a position. We've managed to establish our empire pretty big now. And I'm feeling very, very good about the state of the game. We're currently tied for first place when it comes to victory points. We've got four out of our ten ambitions done. And we've done, uh, we've basically done our fifth one. So we only need five more ambitions or to gain uh, quite a bit more victory points. So I think we're in a relatively good place. I feel like I picked the right difficulty to play on. Uh, I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.